This is Vintage Corner and this time I'll take a look at the Contax T2 compact film camera. Hi guys, my name is Matti Sulanto. I'm a photographer and a Lumix ambassador from Helsinki, Finland. And this is Vintage Corner where I'll take a look at some film cameras and this time it's the Contax T2. Uh, this camera is not mine. This is on loan from camerastore.com and I'm sending this back after I'm done with this review and I'm not getting paid to make this video. I'll just make these vintage corner videos to share my experiences with some film cameras like the Contax T2 this time. But before I go any further, please consider to subscribe to my channel and also hit the bell down there to get a notification every time I put out a new video, if you like this content, that is. But now let's talk a bit about the Contax T2 compact film camera. The Contax T2 is one of the most wanted film cameras these days. And I wanted to take a look at it because even though I've been a photographer for many decades already, I have never ever used the T2 before. So I think now it's about, it was about time. When the T2 was new, it was one of the high-end compact film cameras. And today it's almost a, a cult camera. The design of this camera is very simple and clean. And uh, the build quality certainly feels and probably also is high because a lot of these cameras are still in use even though it's not being made for several years. The other case is I think it's uh, titanium and it comes in several colors and I think this dark uh, or gray whatever color that I have is the by far the best looking and the especially the champagne and gold color uh, Contax T2s they look more like a fashion accessories to me uh, more than a real camera but I'm a bit old-fashioned when it comes to com camera colors I think black is the only correct color for a camera but I have to admit that this uh, gray looks pretty pretty good on on Contax T2 And the design is very clean and simple, but the camera itself is not as simple as it looks. There are many features that are not apparent at first sight, but when you examine the camera a bit more, you'll find out that there are quite a lot of uh, features in this packed in this little camera. The lens is a 38mm f2.8 Carl Zeiss sonar, which has a very, very good reputation. And uh, there's a leaf shutter and the shutter speed range is from 8 seconds to 5, uh, 1 500th of a second. And there's also a plus minus 2 EV exposure compensation, but you can't set the film speed manually. The camera reads the film speed from the film canister if it's a DX coded and if the film canister is not DX coded the camera defaults to ISO 100. So that's a bit of a downside if you want to use um, films that don't have the DX coding. There are some black and white films for example that uh, don't have the DX coding like Formapan films for example. And the aperture modes are either fully automatic P mode or aperture priority. And there's also a flash that only works in the fully automatic P mode. The lens is a retracting type. It goes into the camera when the power is off and when you turn on the power the lens comes out. And the power switch is on the focus uh, dial and on the dial you can choose either autofocus or you can set the focusing distance manually. And I think the 
focusing system on this camera is really really well executed. In real world use this camera is quite nice. It's very easy to carry around even though the size of this thing is not super tiny. It's a small camera but it's not you know a super tiny camera. But the lens that uh, retracts into the camera when the power is off helps a lot because it makes this very like a soap bar <laughs> uh, uh, like shape and it's easy to put into a coat pocket or something. And the startup time is quite fast and I don't think you're going to miss any shots because of any delay between turning on the power and the camera being ready to take a picture. And same goes for the autofocus, it's really fast. The aperture priority mode on this camera is quite interesting. You can choose all other apertures except the f2.8 because as soon as you choose the f2.8 the camera enters the fully automatic p mode and it means that you can't you can never intentionally uh, use f2.8 however i don't think it's it's such a big deal because the minimum shutter speed is 1 500th of a second and if you have uh, something like ISO 400 film in your camera and you go outside you could not use f2.8 anyway because the 500th of a second is not short enough shutter speed. There are many reviewers who complain a lot about this but in real life I don't think it's such a big deal after all. And I shot all my pictures on the fully automatic P mode. And I also did not use the exposure compensation while I was shooting because the compensation dial is kind of awkward to use. However, I set the compensation dial to plus one when I loaded the film because I wanted to overexpose my film slightly by about one stop. The viewfinder on this camera offers quite good information on what's going on. There's the AF indicator in the middle of the frame and you see the um, frame lines and you see the shutter speed indicators on the left side of the viewfinder. However, the viewfinder is tiny and if you wear glasses like I do, it's impossible to see the viewfinder and um, that's one of the major downsides on this camera. And even without glasses you have to push the camera really close to your eye to be able to see the whole viewfinder image. And I think that's a shame because um, the viewfinder is an important uh, feature on a camera because that's how you frame your shot. But now let's take a look at some photos that I shot on this camera and after the photos I'll talk a bit about the lens and um, my conclusion how I feel about this camera. I hope you enjoyed the pictures and if you enjoyed this video please buy me a cup of coffee there's a link down below. And now let's talk about this Carl Zeiss Sonar 38mm f2.8 lens. The design is pretty simple there's only five elements in four groups and the lens is absolutely tiny. However, at least on film it works really well and the pictures are crispy and contrasty and all that. However, the lens has two weaknesses, vignetting and backlight. I don't mind too much about the vignetting part and it's kind of expected because the lens is so tiny. However, it's good to know that when you start using this camera you're gonna get some dark, darkish corners in your pictures. And the backlight part, sometimes it can create some nice effects in your shots, but sometimes it can also ruin your picture. So all in all, I'd say the lens, uh, the lens's reputation is well deserved, and it's a 
it's a good lens for such a tiny camera. And here are my thoughts or my conclusion on this camera after using it for quite some time now. I think the major upsides are the excellent build quality and the materials, and it looks also very good. And the lens is excellent, you can't deny that, and the reputation of the lens is well deserved. And the major downsides are the crappy viewfinder, especially if you are wearing glasses. And this camera is also really expensive these days. These um, go for about $1,000 or euros, give or take, and depending on how in what shape the camera is. But it's a really expensive camera these days. And it's also fully electronic. These cameras have a good reputation of being uh, durable and long-lasting cameras, but still, I mean, if the electronics fail, I'm not sure how repairable this camera is. But all in all, it was a really nice experience to use this camera for such an extended period of time. And it's easy to understand why people want this camera and why it has become such a cult camera. However, if I was going to buy a film camera, I would probably want something a little bit more mechanical and with some more manual controls. But if you are looking for a high quality, good looking compact film camera, I think the Contax T2 is a very good option if you just can afford it. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one.